Hi, welcome to Real Magic Review. My name is Steve Faulkner and today I will be reviewing Demi Deck by Angelo Carbone. Before we do the review, very importantly, loads of stuff to say, so I'll start, try and say it quickly. <laughs> Better than it's here then, felt like a fly flew in it. Right, first off, onlinemagic.co, uh, that's the thing that runs the whole thing. That is my membership site, which is wonderful. It's brilliant, have a look at it. Don't take my word for it, I'm very biased uh, because I love it. I've been doing this for 10 years and uh, it's, have a look at the Trustpilot reviews, have a look at the special guests that are on there. I've got to update the sites that are on there. It says courses available, there's more on there. There's a coin magic course, a rope magic course, a new uh, rubber band magic course, all volume one, going to be more, and loads of live sessions and special guests. Uh, the best magicians in the world. On there, there is. That's good, isn't it? And my new podcast, Steve Faulkner's Magic Show. There is going to be advice on there. There already is. Uh, ask Steve. So you send me emails asking me questions or asking me questions on the comments here, some of which I will take onto the podcast. But importantly, the main bit of it, I've just recorded episode one of Beyond the Wand. Beyond the Wand and uh, there were some very funny versions of that title, uh, is, it are, is, are, is interviews with magicians, but not just about magic. Obviously, magic's part of it, but you know, saying to them, right, if, you, if there was anybody in the world you could meet and go out with and hang out with, what would you do? And there's a lot of questions about that. So it's looking into their lives behind what they do just with magic. And of course, banging on about magic, I will be a lot in that too. So have a look at that. Uh, the first episode should go up today or tomorrow uh, with my friend Noel Quilter. And you're going to be finding out some stuff about Noel that you would never have known or will never read anywhere else. Uh, it's good stuff. So that's Steve Faulkner's Magic Show, wherever you get your podcast. Please give it a search, leave it a review and give me some feedback. It'd be great. Loads more people have agreed to do it and some very big names in magic. So it's all very exciting. Right, uh, and like and subscribe, of course. Demi Deck, um, a lot of talk about this, a lot of hype about this. Does it deserve it? Well, that's what this is about. Uh, full disclosure, I have had this for one day. I've played with it a lot last night. I've used it a lot. I haven't taken it out and done it in a gig. Don't have to, to tell you the things I need to tell you now. If you haven't seen the trailer, do check it out. Uh, Angelo said to me, watch the trailer. I said, no, I don't wanna watch it. I don't know anything about it. I had an idea before I get it and uh, when I got it, I watched the trailer and got very excited. First up, Angelo is someone who I really respect. He, I know there's been stuff on Facebook that he's put on over the years of him just really working on different illusions, different effects, putting loads of time into it, putting loads of work into it and this is no exception and very wisely I think he said I've been working on this for since 2002 was when he started working on it because he said, I've got a video from 2003 and he plays a video from early 2003 and it's this old version of it that he's playing with. And then he shows the sort of the build up to what he's got now. Now, this isn't done in a way I don't think of going, not going to overprove that this is, it's, it's just a wise decision because everybody says I've been working on this for 20 years and you go, well, I haven't seen anything. And this is a genuine thing. And he shows you, he doesn't spend long doing it, he doesn't spend hours doing it. He doesn't try and hype it up to you when you're watching the tutorial of the trick you've already bought, which that kind of winds me up as well a little bit. Winds me up's a bit strong probably. But he he shows you a few versions of this. Tenyo made a version. Colin Rose made a version, but then said, look, if we release this now, I just wouldn't be able to make that many of them because I think a lot of people are going to want it. So over the years, it, he just kind of played with it and used it and performed with it. And now we have this because of the technology we've got now and the ability to produce these things. The trick is, it's one of those ones that gets you. You watch it and you go, I really want to see that. Now it's, you know, talking about Tenyo, I love all that Tenyo stuff, but a lot of it, I, I look at it and go, I, I wouldn't do this. It doesn't fit anywhere. This is kind of a version that does. It is cutting a deck of cards in half, putting it back together. And I love the way that, you know, on, on the trailer, it says, it says to a, an audience member, you know, when you think of a magician, what trick do you think of? Now we know nine times out of 10, people are going to say, sign someone you have. And I get asked at so many gigs, so how do people do that? So it's, this is something you can actually go, right, actually I'll show you a version of it. And it, 
it does look phenomenal and it isn't just a trailer it looks phenomenal i've you know i've looked in front of a mirror i'm not putting any footage on here of me doing it for a very good reason which we're going to talk about in a sec but i showed it to my friend james this morning we have a cup of tea every morning he knows what to look for now and i didn't do it that well and i don't mind with him because he kind of knows a bit no idea he was really and because he's seen quite a lot now he's kind of getting a bit wound up with it so it's great for all that you very briefly there there's a routine with this you can do which, which you get a gimmicked card with which i think is nice it's great i would tend to just keep it pure i think i i, I it is really good actually when he does the thing we will reach inside and remove your card what was your card queen of hearts <laughs> look i'll put it back inside close it right there and look very carefully i'll pull it out just like this 104 pieces now 52 all healed how are they not in half oh oh my god i only turned half <laughs> that's crazy because i flipped it over when i took it out one second this is actually super simple to fix barely an inconvenience that's all good brilliant i love it really good trick maybe it'll work really well live for me but my, my tendency would be to just do it as a thing to just go right now if you're going to just do that there are two ways of doing it there is a way that is a little bit more angly where you hold the deck and, and it's good for one or two people or camera social media and all that and I think again like I always say that is a valid thing but you're gonna to have to be a lot more careful about angles I did that version this morning and that's the one where you pull the cards out you put them back in again you show them everything very clearly you slowly open it up they see the inside of the box on the back of it you open it up again you lift a little flap importantly that shows you the other half of the cards so you can see both ends of the cards put that back, put it back together and slide the cards back out and show the cards as a full deck. Brilliant. The second version is, he says, a little bit more advanced. It's not advanced, really. It's just more to think about, where you show the deck a little bit more openly. It's all a bit quicker, but it's without putting the the uh, sort the, this blade through, all right? Because you're cutting them in half, you're cutting them. This is without the blade. You just split it, put it back together, da 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 uh, and I didn't mention a blade thing before, but you'd have seen it on the on the trailer. That's when you're doing it, you're thinking, oh yeah, I've got to be careful of that. And as he said, there's a few more things to think about. And it's a bit more of a quick kind of one-off, bang, 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 we're going to do this, right, let's get on with it kind of trick. And then you've got the routine and various other ways of doing it you will come up with. The important thing with these kind of tricks is, is it built well? Is it going to last? How angry is it? how easy is it which is less important to me as long as it's doable i'm happy but you don't want it to be completely impossible it's built it, now i've obviously i haven't had it long it seems to be built well now full disclosure the blade bit i got with it came apart a little bit and i've put it back together with a tiny bit of super glue all right if i'd have bought it would i have been bothered with that no because it's not the main unit and i get a feeling that's not going to happen with many people if it does don't come back to me, but you know, the, it's just a tiny little thing. It wasn't like it all fell apart. And I thought, oh, better sort that out. The rest of it, I've, you know, I've, I've really kind of all evening, yesterday evening, just kind of doing it, making sure it didn't loosen, it didn't go weird, nothing came off, nothing, you know, the flap that you open. And by the way, the flap that you open to kind of that convincer of showing the other half of the deck is a bit fiddly. They do talk you through it, but you've got to kind of do something in order to. So when you do it, if you don't watch the instructions, you may kind of struggle with it that takes a little bit of practice just to feel the right place to do what you've got to do but everything else when the other thing is when you tip the cards out you've some sometimes one or two will get stuck in there and you not stuck but will stay in there and you've just got to kind of feed them out again with practice with working on it that isn't going to be a problem but all these things are easy and this is why i'm telling you all this so it makes you feel like you can go out and do it straight away. Angles, again, you're going to have to be wary of them, but they're not difficult angles to think about. Basically, you do this version of people there. If there's people around, you do this other version. If there's people totally around you, looking behind and over your shoulder, you probably won't do it at all. Yes, you could kind of do it at a lower level, but I wouldn't do it. There is an angle thing here. I wouldn't call it an issue. It's the same as a lot of things like this. You are going to have to practice your angles, know where to do it. And when you do the trick, you're going to feel vulnerable, but you'll be all right, is my, is my feeling, once you've done it a few times. When I showed my friend this morning, I was like, is he seeing this? But not at all. Very magical, great effect. So it's an easy trick. 
but it seems that many people have gone out and gone right i can do that and that's kind of how it makes you feel so if i stick it on social media i'll film it i show and you have to think about the subtle bits of this now subtlety doesn't mean difficulty these are very easy things but with these kind of tricks there are maybe three or four things you want to be doing with your fingers and hands that none of which are difficult that have to be unconscious you're not you don't want to be doing this going right if i do that oh yeah i've got to do that i've got to do that and because that creates this kind of cagey feeling and this feeling of process whereas you want to not be thinking about any of that stuff you want to pick it up know exactly what your hands are going to be doing to do what you need to do there's no real it's not like palming or anything when you've, it takes years to get it looking natural it's going to look natural because at each level of it you're holding something it's not like you've got a palm and hold out something and make your hand look natural and pretend it's not holding anything it's all kind of in context but if you're not careful, like some people have done, I think, is you'll kind of go, oh, this is really easy. I can do this straight away without thinking about those things you have to rehearse. And what you have to rehearse is the equivalent to really, you know, rehearsing putting that into that hand and not putting it like that. You know, it's it's kind of a way you put your hand. It's a way you, where you hold your hand. It's a way you open the thing. All of it takes no skill whatsoever, but it takes unconscious competence. You know exactly where your hands are going. So you can talk when you're doing it and you know they can be burning it but you just want all that right so you're not feeling cagey about it and looking cagey about it now you will get away with it if you do that but it will be a little bit like a kid showing you a magic trick you know if a kid shows you you know a 10 year old trick or something like that and i'm not saying 10 year old tricks are just for kids don't get upset but but you can see they're kind of going oh this this, this. but when they practice and it looks smooth it's really amazing the, the little details and subtleties with this are what really makes it work. So when you put the blade in and open it up, you see the blade and the bottom of the box. And that means more than you think. There's a lot of work gone into that. There's a way of kind of not using black art, but making sure that bits that could potentially flash a lot don't flash a lot. And you've got sort of a little bit of leeway and forgiveness there. It feels well made. As I said, nothing's really come apart and I've sort of, you know, given it a bit of work. It is a kind of unusual to us looking card box. So my feeling is that when you've done the trick, you're going to either want to do it first and then go on to it and do a, a load of magic tricks or do it at the end when you put the, a load of card tricks and do it at the end when you put the cards back in, you know, do the thing and then put, put it away. It's not examinable. It doesn't have to be examinable. It doesn't bother me. And, you know, they're going to be so blown away by what they definitely have seen, which is a deck of cards. And they can, of course, examine the cards, which is great because that's the thing they're going to be going... Is it, you know, what, how have these come apart? Does this deserve the hype? I think it's really special. It's different. And Angelo has worked an awful long time on this. It is the result of, of something that he cares about. And I know that because the minute people started putting stuff online that was a slightly weird bit of handling, he was all over the Facebook group going, please don't do this. Please wait. You know, you've got it straight away and taken out. So please here, do this. They put an extra bit in a video just to make sure, which for some of us would be obvious, just to say, look, don't do this because it's going to give the game away a little bit. Again, it wouldn't completely expose the trick, but he, he's really into the fact that he wants people to do this properly because it's something he cares about. He's something he's worked an awful long time on. I think it's really good. I won't be doing it every table because it's just stuff to think about. I think I'll have it and it'll be great for those moments where I go, yeah, it's going to work. This is going to blow people away. Parlour, great. And it's a version. If you, you know, I don't think it's a shoehorn version. I don't think it's a, it's a kind of one of those things. You go, have you ever seen, you know, David Coffey walking through the Great Wall of Triumph? That's the same as two elastic bands going through each other. I actually do that sometimes and it works. But this is genuinely pretty much the same trick and i love the fact it's got the little blade you know you're recreating something and sometimes it's going to feel like you know that question from someone has been spontaneous and you've come up with this amazing way of doing exactly the same trick and everybody says by the way not everybody but so many people say to me yeah i love close-up magic the stuff on stage is all right and that's great telly but the, it's right there and the fact is this is that trick but it's right there uh, and it's great and you know it's got a lovely box to it this is important now this box and i'm not saying hey it's lovely it's good packaging is proper solid so it gives you something you know to to carry this prop in and to make sure it, it keeps well sort of thing so i would you know i wouldn't chuck this in my close-up case 
you know, it, without this box. And I think I like the fact it's not massive, it's just a bit bigger than the thing, and it's somewhere to keep the prop. Um, oh, that's why it won't close, because the, the little blade uh, is in the way. Uh, yeah, but I think it's a, it's a good release. I think mean, it's solid, and anybody having a problem with it just hasn't practiced with it, and you haven't got to practice that much, really. Uh, I'd love to hear what you think. Uh, that is Demi Deck. Congratulations to Angelo um, 